probability, a huge topic, a huge adventure. Um, here, we're going to do just the tiniest introduction to probability uh, in the context of our combinatorics adventure, because a lot of probability problems can be solved using the counting techniques that we've been playing with lately. Um, I want to make a disclaimer, asterisk, footnote, fine print, uh, warning, whatever it might be, that you'll, you'll get much better, much more thorough definitions of basically everything I'm talking about here, um, say in a 300 level or, or above probability course. Um, these are, these are um, sort of quick definitions that work in a very limited scope. You'll, you know, the, these will get generalized to handle much, much more broad situations. Um, but these will work for the scope of the kind of problems that I want to demonstrate um, today. So that's that's what we're going with. Um, so here, our first is just what is probability? So the probability of an event um, can mean a lot of things. But if, suppose your event only has finitely many possible outcomes. Um, and say among the possible outcomes, the they're somehow equally likely, right? Any outcome is as likely as any other among the set of all possible outcomes. Um, so a good way to think of that is say I'm rolling standard, um, a standard die, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six, they're all equally likely, right? Um, and the definition of a probability of an event then is the number of successful outcomes divided by the total number of possible outcomes, right? So a very, very tiny example is you could say, um, you know, if you're going to roll one, um, one just standard die, right? Probability of a roll greater than four, right? Well, what's the probability? That would be two out of six, right? That'd be probability one third because there are six equally likely possible outcomes, one through six when you roll that die, um, and two of them are successful, right? If you roll a five or you roll a six, then you got something greater than four. So that's that's what we mean by successful outcomes out of possible outcomes. There's a, a tiny example. So um, then here are some things, um, a, a bit of notation, right? This is maybe not even really a definition so much as just notation. This is commonly used notation um, that if an event X has outcome N, you can write X equals N. And here notice I'm doing capital X with the little uh, extra feet. Uh, on the top and bottom. Um, so we write x equals n. Um, the probability of outcome n is written p of x equals n, right? And, and I wanted to kind of, you know, showcase this just because it's a little bit strange looking, right? To say like a function of an equation. We don't usually write things like that in mathematics. Um, well, no, we, we do. In probability theory, people write things like that all the time. Um, say in, in the calculus sequence or in, in K-12, there aren't usually expressions like that. Um, so I, I wanted to just point out that notation. You'll see that a lot in this context. Um, and here's, here's a quick little theorem um, that based on that notation, the sum over all possible uh, outcomes, right? So what is in here? P of x equals zero. P of x equals one, P of x equals two, all the way up to infinity, that sum is one. This is part of just what we mean by probability, right? If you sum over all possible outcomes, you have to get one, right? For example, if again, we did our roll one die, right? Then what would this look like? If, if that was our event, was the outcome of a dice roll, right? Then what would happen this in this summation? Well, it would look like you'd have the probability, so this summation would be what? If the probability that you roll a zero plus the probability that you roll a one plus the probability that you roll a two and so on, all the way up to infinity. Well, th what is this summation gonna look like? It's gonna look like zero plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth, plus one sixth. How many do I have there? One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, right? Because there's a one sixth chance of rolling any of one, two, three, four, five, or six. Um, and then it would be a sum of a bunch of zeros. You can't roll a seven, you can't roll an eight and so on, right? So then it's just all zeros after that. So it's a sixth plus itself, right? With six terms, um, which totals to one. So there we go. There's a tiny example of that zero. Um, and now I, I should also mention that this could be just summing over natural numbers. 
Um, you could also more generally sum, or you can sum over the set of all possible outcomes, right? It doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to have numerical outcomes, um, right? You could just say, I'm just summing over the set of all possible outcomes. Um, is it, you know, here I wrote it with numbers, maybe because say in a Calc 2 course, right? A summation from zero to infinity is something we're very familiar with. Um, and if your event happens to have natural number outputs, then great. But you can also just sum over the set of all possible outcomes. So that would be a slightly more general version of, of this of this statement. So, all right, um, next, what do we have? Another definition, the expected value. So expected value of an event X is this, right? Is the sum, um, which once again, here I'm writing it for natural numbers, right? But if you want, you could also do this just for the set of all possible outcomes. Um, and what is this? This is saying, take each outcome, right? And say, what is that outcome? And multiply it, right? I want to weight it. Weighted by the likelihood of that outcome. Right, the likelihood of that outcome. Right, so this is um, it, one good way to think of it is it's a weighted average of all possible outcomes, weighted by how likely they are to occur. This is a great way to think of of expected value. Um, note, this does not say most likely outcome, right? <laughs> expected value in general does not have to necessarily be the mode, right? Does not have to be the most common outcome or the most likely outcome. It's, I think it's easy to confuse that confuse those two notions, right? Um, so here's, again, a, a tiny little example. It would be, um, suppose you said, what's the expected value of rolling just one, one die, right? A standard six-sided die. Right, well, what is, what is that going to be? What are all the possible outcomes? You could roll a one, and that happens a sixth of the time. You could roll a two, which happens a sixth of the time. You could roll a three which happens a sixth of the time, a four, which happens a sixth of the time, a five, which happens one sixth of the time, or a six, which happens a sixth of the time. And if you grind out all the numbers there, you get 3.5, right? So that's the expected value of rolling one die. This is what I was saying. Note, this is not, I'll go to red for warning, right? Not the most likely outcome, right? 3.5 is impossible, right? You can't, you cannot roll a 3.5. There's no 3.5 on the on the die. But what it so this is impossible on a single roll, but that's okay. The what the expected value is doing is it's telling you the weighted average of all the rolls, right? So a good interpretation of this, so then you might say, well, if it's impossible, what is this 3.5 even telling us? Here's a good interpretation of this um, is. If you is if you rolled ten die, there's a really good chance that, that the total would be around thirty five, right? There's a really good chance that you get about thirty five, and this is a fun thing to actually try. Take an actual six sided die, roll it ten times. It doesn't take very long to do it, and and add up the results, and I. I'd be willing to bet you get something very close to 35. Um, and of course you can, it's not guaranteed. You can be freakishly lucky or unlucky and get a whole bunch of fives and sixes or a whole bunch of ones and twos. And maybe it ends up quite a bit above or quite a bit below that. But I'll bet if you roll it a thousand times, you'll be really close to 3,500, right? So, so the, the bigger the bigger you go, the more, the closer, um, you're going to get to being just that number of times the expected value, right? So, um, so that's what uh, a nice way to think of expected value is. 
um, is think of it as the, if you uh, repeat the event, it tells you what's on in the long term, what's the average contribution of each of each attempt, right? So, okay, so that's expected value. And so it's probability and expected value. Let me then go on, and here we did sort of simple examples with dice, right? Um, with just rolling one die, how complicated could it be, right? Um, let's up the, up the ante a little bit um, and let's raise the stakes uh, and let's go for cards, right? Let's do a more complicated example with cards. So here's a tricky probability question. Um, let's find the probability of a full house in standard five card poker. And what is what is a full house? A full house means that you have in five card poker, it means that you have three of the same denomination and also two of the same denomination. Um, the suits are irrelevant. They could be absolutely anything. So, is, right? so it's, that's how you get a, a full house. It doesn't matter any sort of agreement between the, between the two denominations or anything like that. Um, so for example, you know, if I had three queens and two sevens, that's a full house. Um, and I don't, again, suits, suits don't matter. So, so let's find a probability of a full house in standard five card poker. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to do the number of successes, just like I was saying before, number of successful outcomes. So number of ways to actually be dealt a full house divided by the total number of hands or the number of possible hands. So let's start with the denominator because that's by far the easier piece. Um, the easier piece is the denominator. It's just 52 choose five. There are 52 cards in a deck of cards um, and we are selecting five of them. Repeats are not allowed because once a card is dealt, it's dealt, it's right, it can't be dealt again. You can't deal the same card twice. Um, order does not matter because like say I was dealt a queen, a seven, a queen, a queen and a seven, right? I still have my full house. I could bring them into my hand and shuffle them up anyway, right? It, once they get in my hand, I don't have to be dealt them in a particular order, right? No one even knows in poker what order your cards were dealt to you, right? A lot of times that's the first thing people will do is pick up their cards and kind of sort them according to how they like to sort their hands or, or not sort them, right? Um, but you can, right? So that's why um, repeats are not allowed, right? And order does not matter. Right, order is irrelevant. So that's our, our denominator. Um, the trickier part here is the numerator, right? The numerator, what do we need to do? Well, there's a lot going on to build a full house. Um, one, and the first thing you need to do is pick your suits. So there are two suits that appear here, say queens and sevens, right? Out of, sorry, not suits, denominations, right? There are two values that are appearing in your hand. There's something that you have three of and something that you have two of. So there are, that's why I'm selecting two values out of the possible 13, right? So select two values from the possible 13 values of the card. Now, from that, we have to pick of those two values, I have to pick one that I have three of and one that I have two of. So, right, pick who we have, say, three of. Um, the idea is, suppose I already chose queens and sevens from that 13 choose two. Well, then this two choose one is acknowledging the fact that I could do three sevens and two queens, or I could do three queens and two sevens. But right, they're both valid ways to build a full house. So we need to account for that. Um, then I need to be aware that there are um, quite a few different ways the suits can go, right? So whatever, there are four suits in whatever value you have three of. So pick three of those four. Um, there are four suits in whatever you have two of. So pick two of those four. For example, say we have two sevens like we had here. Well, you could have what? You could have the seven of diamonds and the seven of spades, the seven of diamonds and the seven of clubs, the seven of diamonds and the seven of hearts, and yada, 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 right? Um, so that's what we're counting here. So that this part of our, um, of our numerator, right? is all the ways to choose suits, right? That's for the, however, 
for whatever value we have three of and whatever value we have four of. So that's our, um, that's our expression. Now this expression, if you grind out all the, the numbers, um, you get 0 0.00144, roughly. There's more decimals, I'm truncating it, right? Um, or if you want to see it as a percent, right, it's point, um, about 0.144%, right? This is the, um, the probability of a, of a full house. So this is, this is why poker is a fun game, right? Um, you know, it's unlikely, right? You're not going to get it every time. It's not so unlikely that it'll never happen, right? It's you probably, right, 0.1% of the time. It's small, but not, you know, maybe totally impossible. So, all right. Now, let's look at an expected value from, for a game, right? Let's play a game, right? Let's, let's say this is a new, new casino game, right? And let's say this new casino game goes as follows. You pay $10 to play. Right, you pay ten dollars to play this game, and what happens is, for ten dollars, you get dealt a random five cards. Right, you deal out five cards. Okay, great. If it's a full house, if it's a full house, you win five thousand dollars, and otherwise. If it's not a full house, nothing happens, right? So this is this is the game that we're going to play, um, and so I mean it sounds super exciting, right? Okay, I only, it only costs ten dollars to play. That's not that much up front compared to the possibility of winning five thousand dollars, right? Um, so this is a super exciting game. I, send me an email if you want to play this i'll take you up on the bet if you got the five grand i'll i'll pay you ten dollars right now to play this it'll be fun we can play it once right um but i wouldn't play this game a hundred times with you i'll show you why here's here's why so <laughs> what is the expected value let's see what the expected value is for this game well the expected value is the what is it it's the sum over all possible outcomes right and this this is um a little bit what i mentioned before it doesn't have to necessarily be numerical outcomes um it could just be whatever the set of all possible outcomes are um and it's the set of all outcomes weighted by their probabilities right um and so what i want to do here is i want to say there are really two possible outcomes win or lose right and what happens in each of these cases? Let's think about what happens. Well, in the case where I lose, I lost $10, right? So I have negative 10 times the probability of losing. In the case where I win, I won $4,990 because I paid 10 to play. I didn't get that refunded, right? So it's my winnings minus what I paid to play the game. Okay, great. So, so this then is our expression well these probabilities i actually already have these probabilities because i know the probability of winning that's what i worked out in the previous right this is the 0 0.00144 right then i have the probability of losing which is going to be one minus that same probability right? and if you grind all this out this comes out to negative 2.8 is the what this comes out to Meaning, if the casino offers this game, say, you know, the first person to play it wins. Well, the casino just lost a ton of money, right? That's entirely possible. But if this game gets played over and over and over and over in the long term, on average, right, the casino will make almost $3 a person, right? That's counting the loss that they take on those payouts, right? So the casino will make and the players collectively will lose, right, $2.80 per play, right? So if you play this game repeatedly, you're even yourself, right? You're very, very likely gonna lose $2.80 per play. Um, all right, the, on average, right? Including wins and losses. So, all right, there we go. So there's an example of expected value. 
right, computed using our combinatorial te techniques. Great. Thank you so much.